What's up guys? Welcome back to the Rad Potential YouTube channel. Working on the brown car. Finally. So, what are we doing? I've got the Mega Squirt harness laid out right here. These are all wires that are extra hanging out over here. So, I believe that this one goes to the ground. I will have to look up what each of these other wire goes to. However, they look like they were just cut and terminated after I unzip tied them. So, have to deal with those right here. So, when I do an engine harness, even if it's just putting a stock harness back in, I like to lay everything out, inspect it, make sure there's no cracked wires, there's nothing coming apart, nothing terrible. So you can see over here, like even whenever I put the engine harness in the the convertible for the first time, um, or back in the convertible, everything got cleaned and like retaped up. So you can see how it's all nice and and like I mean, electrical tape gets hard over time, but all nice and clean and whatever and it doesn't look like this you wouldn't put this harness on your car at least I wouldn't some people would but I wouldn't so we've got the mega squirt harness laid out here and basically what I'm doing is I have the wiring diagram and I'm just making sure that each color wire coming out of the the big pin connector so right here this is the actual unit itself so you have your main plug here this is for a map sensor so there's a built-in pressure sensor basically so that sensor is going to sense inches of mercury and also boost so if you're turbo you don't have to have some fancy map sensor now i will say this is mega squirt one so i don't know how or what the range is of their map sensor so it might not be more than one bar so if I, for example, if you have like a one bar map sensor, it won't read over 14.7 pounds of boost or whatever it is. Or, yeah, 14 and then some change. But anyways, it won't read over that, so then the computer doesn't know what's going on, so it freaks out. So, luckily, it's going to be NA. So it doesn't matter. So I know it'll work. So, this ECU is set up before to run on a Series 4 NA car, which means that Series 4 NA has a narrow band TPS, so three wire TPS rule similar to this. It basically, if I recall correctly, is about the exact same setup that the GSLSE has. So it should plug right in or I'm gonna just plug it in and see what happens, see if it reads. So we're gonna be using this intake setup and this throttle body. The other thing that an S4 and I had is four injectors versus two. So the SEs had two big injectors in the primary location, so which is located in the center iron of the engine. And I don't have any center irons facing me right now, but down underneath the intakes, down in the center iron, there's two primary intake ports. And there's two injectors located down there, which are the primary injectors. So basically, from the factory, the throttle body system is staged on these cars. So when you hit the throttle, it opens the, the top blade or I guess it opens the bottom blade for your low speed, and when you floor it, it opens the secondary blades as well. So that way that allows the engine to have torque by not having just all or nothing. So it's not like a, let's say like a big cam car for those uh, non-rotary people. It's staging the airflow, so more control. Well, the S4 NA cars, and just cars after GSLC really, had primary and secondary injectors. So. The 680s are the primary positions here. These two are secondary injectors, which would have went right here in the manifold. So basically right through here on a uh, Series 4 and A or just any of the newer FC stuff. So these two plugs won't get used in the system on this car. I'm going to run only the two GSLC primaries. Now, one thing that people do have issues with with these yellow top injectors, the old school GSLC ones, is they do tend to leak. So they will leak fuel into the engine, which will in turn flood the engine and it won't start. So a lot of times too, even when people flood these, these cars, the gas cleans the oil off the rotor. So it'll clean the oil out of the apex seals off the housing and everything. And what happens with that is that now since there's no oil there, it's hard for the engine to seal up and then it's really hard to start. So if you flood one and you still can't get it started, try pouring some two-stroke oil into the intake. It'll help. So now that we've talked about that, this is a resistor pack. 
pump low impedance old school injectors. This is a GSLSE resistor pack, so that's wired in. So I have to power that, and that's where the the ECU sends a signal to this, which has power already, which sends the proper resisted signal to the injectors, if I recall correctly. This right here, this plug, although it looks just like an injector plug, it is not. This is for your coolant temp sensor, which is in the back of the water pump housing right here. So normally these plugs are green, which you can kind of see it right there. So we'll plug that in. And then this one right here, luckily the sensor is still attached, even though these are pretty easy to come by. This is an air temp sensor, intake air temp. So on a GSLSC, if I recall correctly, they're located on this side of the upper plenum, down in this area right here. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so you can't really see it, but it's down under there. These are the two wires for it right here. I have actually lost my 12 millimeter, my 14 millimeter, and my 10 millimeter socket. And I have no idea where they went right now. So I can't even take this apart tonight until I go to the store and buy another socket because they're gone. Unless I use my like, half inch drive stuff, which is probably what I'll do. But I have no clue where they went. There's also a ratchet missing, so I think maybe they got left in somebody's car at Deals Gap or I don't know. They're gone. I can prove it. I just cleaned the whole shop trying to look for them and no 12, no 14. I have this 10, but I normally have another one and the 12 and 14 are also gone from over here too. So we're kind of dead in the water, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure that all of these work and that they're all pinned out correctly and we'll see what happens. So hopefully next this thing's running. What's up? Have potential YouTube followers, it's another day. And we are out here getting ready to unload the beast. So, it's been sitting here because, well, I have a day job and I go to work and I work a lot, which kind of sucks, but, um, which means I don't get to play with my toys all the time. Oh man, bird got me. So, what the plan is, I'm gonna take this thing, I'm gonna drive it up there, I'm gonna back it up to the house, I'm gonna wash it. Yes, wash the car before it sits outside for five months of the summer. And uh, cause this one goes in the shop for the winter time so that way I can get it all flushed out for the winter and, uh, and ready to roll. So we're gonna take this up there, we go clean it off and then we're gonna unload it. And Josh is coming out today I think to shoot his new gun. So he'll be here at some point with the Camaro. Ain't got nothing on this old girl though. So, for those of you who've ever wondered, my driveway isn't quite terrible to get a trailer up and down, but it does kind of suck. So, ready to watch me Austin Powers this thing so that my truck is 180 degrees from there. It also really sucks backing a trailer all the way up my driveway. So, here we go. Enjoy. All right guys, she's clean, looking sick. Looks so good with that fresh coat of clear coat on it, doesn't it? How about that? I just love the front end of this thing. Once it's low and angry looking, can you imagine that coming down the road at you? Maybe do some like Hellcat headlights with the little rings and a hole through one of these so that way it sucks some air in faster for the all so mighty 200 horsepower of Bridgeport Madness that this is gonna make. <laughs> Man, it looks pretty good when it's all wet and shiny. All right, let's park it. Put it in a spot for a little bit. Get me a tarp at Tractor Supply and wrap it up. What's up guys, Cosmo's off the trailer. Back in the shop, getting ready to do some work. So. We can be productive now. I found my tools. The 10, the 12, and the 14, and the 12 wrench. They were in the trunk of the BMW because I had to replace the battery in that car and 
I forgot that they were there. So, we can now work on things that are metric and I didn't have to buy more tools. Time to take this apart. This used to be all pretty and clean, but now it's been sitting a little bit, so we got some surface rust on some stuff, but boom, it's gone. Boom, it's gone. All right, so I've laid the harness in here. Well, Josh is here. Hello. So, laid the harness in here. I got the injectors hooked up, the coolant temp sensor hooked up. I've got to hook up a ground. This is the resistor pack, as you all saw. And then we have TPS and air temp sensor. So, these get hooked up once I put the upper intake manifold back on. Now, I'm going to leave all the vacuum stuff in there, and I'm just going to hook it back up. Because then I won't have any vacuum leaks, and it should be good instead of blocking it all off and taking this out and whatever. Because if I can make this run, kind of laying in here like this, all messy, and I know it works, then I'll clean it up and make it look nice. So... That's kind of where we're at. I want to make sure I have the harness figured out before I actually cut everything out of it and, and remove everything from the SC. Sound like a good plan? Good plan. All right. So we're going to put this manifold back on and get the car up in the air, bring the battery in here, power some stuff up, and hopefully get this thing fired. All right, people of the internet. We're doing cool things. Slash Jerry rigging. So we got the Mega Squirt sitting here, grounded. This is the resistor pack for the injectors, grounded. The main ground is going there. Jumper wire for the power, connected to our jumper cables, which are connected to the jumper battery on the floor. Just everything's a jumper. This is supposed to turn the fuel pump on, but we're gonna use the existing ECU, which is still in the car, and here's the harness, to turn that on. We have it plugged into the injectors, and the TPS is hooked up in the air temp sensor. So, I'm about to turn the key on, we're gonna power this baby up. So go ahead, Josh, and hook that up. We'll see if this thing lights up. Ready? Yeah. Oh, we got lights on the back of the Mega Squared here. All three reds. Good deal. Notice the door chime still works. That's a first. <laughs> Ain't that just annoying? <laughs> okay, now, I'm gonna put it in neutral. This thing should have a starter in it, if I recall correctly. So, key on. Got power, so that should still be powered up. I didn't hear the fuel pump. So I'm gonna look and see. We were having issues with it flooding, so it might be disconnected. You never know. This bin should just lift right up. Yeah. Okay, fuel pump is plugged in. Yeah, she's plugged in. So, let's just go ahead and we're gonna crank it, make sure everything's clear. So, it'll either light off instantly because mega squirts are cool and it'll work, or it's just gonna crank. So, power on. Clear. Clear. Oh, wait. What the hell? The clutch is depressed. Air in the fuel pump. Does this have a starter in it? No, sir. Oh, man. Well, that's why I didn't crank it and don't have no starter. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, well, we need to find a starter because it doesn't have one. And that kind of sucks because I'm really not feeling like taking a starter out of my car tonight. So. What do we do? Pull a starter. We're gonna go get a starter. <laughs> do is touch it. All right, so we found a starter under the bench. Jerry rigging up. See if it works. Just touch, uh, touch the the. Yeah. Boom. Did it lock up? Why are you being dumb? Here, let me try this one. All right, so we have clean the terminals for the battery. By a battery, Louisiana. Name the movie. Da da da. If you didn't know it, Forrest Gump. All right. Well, let's see what we got here. Oh, I got no power. None at all. Still none. 
You got them hooked up to the right terminals? Yeah. Okay. Is it hooked up on the battery still down below you? Nope. Ready? Yep. Sweet. Power's up. Power's up. All right, fuel pump's jumpered on. Fuel pump's jumpered on. We are going to hit it with the cranks. Alright people, so it's getting a little late, just shut the fuel pump off, it's been a busy week, coming up on Memorial Day weekend so I got some traveling to do this weekend, not going to be able to really tinker with much which kind of sucks because I was really hoping to have this thing running but it happens, deadlines get pushed back, we're really not on a super deadline, I was just setting it for myself, so with that, Apologize for not getting it started, but it really sucks. I really hope we'd get it fired up. This setup's pretty simple, so I guess what I'm going to have to do is do some research on the old Mega Squirt 1, figure out how to get my laptop to talk to this, and see if I can actually make sure that it works fuel only. If not, we'll have to hook up FC coils on this thing, which is not hard, but that's just a little bit more of an involved process to do it cleanly and proper. So, with that, I wish you all a good day, good night. I'm going to go to bed. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Josh, for coming over to help. Absolutely. We did some shooting. Keep it rad. See you next time.